What is up guys, it's XS Motor Warfare here, Gamertag Banjo Chicken, and welcome back to another episode of JTag Tutorial. So in this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to install Ubuntu, uh, a Linux operating system essentially, onto your JTag or RJH console. So there's not a lot of huge practical uses for this, but it is just one of those cool things that you can do with your JTag. Another cool one to add to the list, so you can actually install a computer operating system, or run a computer operating system, on your JTAG or RGH console, which is just pretty freaking cool. So, first thing you're going to need is a USB stick that is formatted to FAT32 format. So, you see, I've got one here. Uh, it's an 8 gigabyte USB. You could probably do this on a 1 gigabyte USB because Ubuntu, this version that has been modified for uh, to be compatible with the JTAG, is only like 300 or so megabytes so that's not too bad you could probably fit it on a 1 gig USB so what you're going to do is open up the USB and extract the files in here so we've got Ubuntu I'll put a download link to this in the description this is the Xenon Beta 5 version which is the special version that has been uh, modified to be compatible with the JTAG so when you open it uh, there'll be an ISO file so you want to extract that to the desktop and once we have it extracted, uh, make sure you open it up with WinRAR, that'll let you open ISO files, so uh, you can open it with WinRAR if you don't have it set to default, you can just right click and uh, go to open with WinRAR or choose default program select WinRAR, or when you just select open it'll say choose a file to open and choose a program to open this file with and choose WinRAR to open it with. Uh, so we open up the ISO, there should be a folder and a file, just extract them to the root of your USB stick. Alright, now that it has transferred over, what you want to go ahead and do is get Zell Launch. And the reason you want to get Zell Launch, obviously you could just press the eject button and boot straight into Zell using the eject on the console. But uh, the problem with doing that is it will be a little bit slower. For some reason, if you boot into the dashboard first and then launch uh, Zell through a launcher or an XEX file like Zell launch then you will get better performance uh, it will load up faster and it will just generally perform a little bit quicker for you I'm not entirely sure the reason from that I've heard from different sources that it's something to do with if you just boot into Zell with the eject it only uses the first 50 blocks of the NAND and therefore it's not using 100% of the processor or utilizing all the processor whereas if you boot into the dash first then launch Zell launch you are effectively using or you have access to more power from the processor or something like that could be completely wrong but that's what I hear from certain sources anyway so we're gonna go ahead and do that so we're gonna open up Zell launch and we're going to copy the default .xcx and the Zell .bin into the root of the USB and effectively now all we have to do is go over to the console do not plug the USB stick in straight away if you plug in the USB and then turn the console on normally it will boot into the normal dash or it will try to boot into the normal dash so you'll get the Xbox logo and then it will just jump straight into Zell you don't want that you want to get into the dashboard first to make sure we have a, a proper network connection uh, to the internet so that we can actually use the internet when we go on uh, Linux on the JTAG so we're going to boot into the dash first and then plug in our USB and launch Zell through XCX menu. So I'll go over to the console and show you guys what to do from there. Alright, so now that we have got uh, the console booted up, we're going to head over to system and network settings and just make sure that we are connected to our network so we have a valid IP address, which I do. Um, you can also test PC connection to uh, make sure it's able to connect to a computer on the network. That will tell you if it's connected or not. And um, what we're going to do now is head back to the dash, go back to XCX menu. So we're going to have to go on XCX menu and plug in our USB stick to the console. And press right bumper and wait for it to detect the USB. It should automatically jump to the USB when it's detected. If not, you press X and select it and just hover over default XEX and press A to launch and when you do that it should boot into Zell which will then boot into Ubuntu alright guys so as you can see Zell Reloaded is uh, loading up looks a bit different through Zell launch just some different colors that's uh, some minor changes by the looks of things 
So what you're going to do is just wait for it to boot up. Uh, it will say that there's no xenon.elf found, but it will launch the VM Linux file. You don't need to rename that uh, to xenon.elf like some people do. There's no need for that. Um, so just wait for it to load the file. Shouldn't be too long. Just a few seconds, and there we go. Uh, next, we should get Linux loading. There we go. So when you see the penguins, you can see that it is loading up Linux, and this shouldn't take too long now. Sometimes this can take for ages, this part, but usually that only happens when you don't have a network connection or if you're booting Xel through the eject instead of through Xel launch. Put my controller down now, get my keyboard hooked up. And there we go, we have the mouse up straight away. So that was ridiculously fast, um, which is why I always say go into the dash first. Uh, oops, screensaver. So yeah, go into the dashboard first, and that way you will uh, and make sure you have a network connection and it will boot a lot faster. All right, so I have a USB mouse and keyboard connected now. So what we can do now, this is the bottom part here is actually cut off for me because I'm recording with my Elgato Game Capture HD and it kind of cuts off the margins down the bottom here so I can only see down to where the tip of my mouse is so it's going to be a bit difficult for me. I know on the actual recording you'll see the taskbar fully but it's just the way the Elgato is set up so um, bear with me here. So we've got File Manager, we can go in here, we can uh, look at our desktop which we've got to install. If we installed that it would probably uh, wipe the hard drive and install the Ubuntu files to the hard drive. We don't want to do that because obviously all our games and all the stuff we have on our hard drive will be erased. So don't install it, just leave it running off the USB. Um, I've got some applications, internet, other sound preferences. Um, go back and forward. It is a fully, it's a full operating system, it's a computer operating system. We can go on the internet. Uh, I've got Firefox pre preset here so we've got Firefox open you can see we've got Google uh, so let's do a Google search for um, I don't know let's uh, go for or we'll, we'll go to a website we can head to let's go to apparitionnet.co.uk full screen And there we are. <laughs> You've got the website loaded. So yeah, you can fully browse the internet. Let's go on. Uh, let's go on to my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash. And bam, there we go. So yeah, it's a f yeah full on operating system. Um, pretty handy. Uh, the only problem with this is it is old. Uh, you can see that the uh, graphics kind of drivers are all over the place, not fully installed. Um, this bit is cut off for me, so it's very hard to find. There we go. Right. So yeah, you can see when I move this about that it kind of glitches around the screen. Um, because there's not really any graphics drivers for it. Uh, it's an older version of Ubuntu as well. Um, so it would be good if somebody would, or whoever made this version, I think it's Libic Xenon, or the team behind this, but um, yeah, if, if they could maybe make an updated version, go for maybe Ubuntu 14.4, one of the, the newer uh, versions of Ubuntu with the, uh, the more modern UI, then that would be pretty awesome, but um, it's still cool that you can do this, that you can actually use a computer operating system on a JTAG or RGH console. It's just pretty damn beast. Now, don't worry about this uh, causing damage to any of your files. As long as you don't install it and you just run it off the USB, it's not gonna cause any harm. All you have to do is shut down um, or turn off the console and unplug the USB 
and turn it back on, it will boot back into the dashboard, everything will be fine. Um, it's not going to like do anything weird to your console. So that's it. That's how you install Ubuntu on or run Ubuntu, run a Linux operating system on a JTAG or RGH console. So I hope you guys liked the video. Make sure to leave a like if you did like it or found the information useful. Comment if you have any questions. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And I'll see you guys next time.